Hi guys, this video today is a side-by-side -side of Eric C. Dunn's Tarot Illuminati and Tarot Apocalypsis. Now, this video is long overdue. Um, I wanted to do this a couple years ago, and I just decided to do it now. So, in the Apocalypsis Tarot, this was the sister deck. The first one that came out was the Illuminati. Um, and when him and Kim, Kim Huggins, excuse me, got together, they did the Tarot Illuminati first with a smaller guidebook. And then the second deck they did was this one. And they did it with a much bigger guidebook, much more information. I love the guidebook personally and the cards. I love both decks. Um, if I had to pick a favorite between the two, it would be this one, the Apocalypsis. Um, they give you an extra card, which is called the All Gifted. Now, for those of you that are thinking of purchasing this deck, if you get the All Gifted, I mean, if you get the Apocalypsis Tarot and you get the All Gifted, I'm just going to give you a little bit of her background. I'm not going to go too much into the cards as I am showing them to you. Um, what this card represents is basically Pandora, whose name means all gifted. Okay. Um, it's optional if you want to leave her in the deck when you're doing readings for people or yourself. Basically, she was the first woman from whom all other women came, or so they say. Um, they say she shares things in common with Eve. Um, you know, like Eve, Pandora was gifted to a man to be his wife. Um, she was gifted a jar, which a lot of people interpret as a box. That's why you hear the saying Pandora's box. It's a famous quoted term. Um, either way, it became irresistible to Pandora or her guy. They opened it and released the contents to the world. Okay, and basically what they were saying was um, in doing so when they released the contents, um, there were all things good and bad that came out and um, I don't know, they just, some people say it was evils and whatever. But long story short, if you choose to use the card, you know, and you're not familiar with it, just look in the book. They give such fantastic explanations of everything. So let's start showing the deck, shall we? Okay, this is, like I said, they're both created by Eric C. Dunn and Kim Huggins. This one first, then this one. This is the Tarot Illuminati's Fool. This is the Apocalypse, the second X Fool. Um, this one, the edges are a little more worn because I use <laughs> this one a little more. Um, this one's a little harder to shuffle for me. But at any rate, that's the Fool. Now we have our Magicians. In the Tarot Illuminati, they called it the Alchemist. And they kept the Magician in... The other deck. Just a side by side walk through so you can see the differences between, you know. This one obviously is the High Priestess. I think they're both very beautiful. Um, if I had to pick out of the two decks, I mean, I read more with this one than with this one. Um, there's cards in the Apocalypse deck that I really like better than in the Illuminati, but there's cards in the Illuminati that I would choose over the other. I like the whole Viking scheme here just love it but I also like this whole like kind of I don't know what you would call it renaissance kind of background and dress up and 
throne. And then we got these two very different, sorry about that, guys, um, Hierophant cards. This one is more on the Popey, if you will, end. And this one is more on the Dalai Lama end, which is pretty cool to me. The Lovers. I can't say enough about his artwork. I mean, I'm just in love. Um, there's some tarot readers that I've seen some reviews on YouTube and they weren't too happy with, they love the Illuminati where they weren't too happy with the apocalypsis. Um, I myself, I guess I favor this deck because, um, you know, like the guidebook is just outstandingly wonderful. It's got so much info in it. Um. It's a little bit more on the goddess and god and mythology. I think maybe that's why I'm more lured into it. Um, a lot of people were complaining because when you would buy the Illuminati deck, when that first came out, you know, like they were upset because the guidebook was relatively thin and... Not as informational as the second deck he made. So, in the, you know, you had to go to into the stores or go online and buy, I think it's called The Guide to the Tarot Illuminati. It's it's a newer, thicker book. And it, it gives you a little bit more information, which is great. But a lot of people's complaint was, wait a minute, I already bought the deck in the guidebook. Why am I buying another book for the deck? It's just a little more delves a little more into the deck. Um, when I got the Apocalypsis, which was like, before I even had a chance to really review the other one, that one came in. So it was kind of like I was bouncing between the two and I was looking at side-by-sides and I'm like, man, I got to do a review. This is going to be great. I can't wait to do it. And here I am two years later. <laughs> I think I probably tried a couple and it just didn't come out the way I wanted. So I love the difference in the two towers we got here. Um, there's a lot of different culture in these decks, which I think is a fantastic idea. Rather than going with your traditional just rider weighty, you know. This little dark spot. The sun. I mean. If I had to choose, man. Like, when I look at these two decks, sometimes I look at the card for each deck. Like, Judgment here and Judgment here. And I'm like, man, I don't know which one I would pick. If I had to choose one, it would be hard for me. Um... The world on both of these is just outstandingly awesome. Same thing with the Ace of Cups. I'm going to try to speed this up a little, guys, because I don't want to make bore you to death. I do love the way they set up everything with, um, you know, like the color schemes and the gold really pops out. Um, I personally like the backs of the Apocalypsis. I like both of them. But these fall into like my, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little messy. Um, this is like my favorite kind of artwork. It still holds that like fairy tale kind of sense, but it has class too. It's got pizzazz, it's got color, it's got a little bit of graphics, and it's got a little bit of a fairy tale kind of touch. But it's so, um, I don't know, interdimensional for me. I just love it. Um, when you look at a tarot deck and you're working with one, 
you should really be able to kind of feel yourself in the scene, you know. Um, and if the color's too dull or the picture's too fake looking or there's too much going on, you can't really get in there when you look at those cards and you're trying to see what's going on and what your intuition is saying. Um, you know, a lot of people, they just get a deck and they don't really spend too much time on the guidebook. You know, they give it a glance, read a couple pages, and they're like, all right, I'm good. You know, I know what tarot is all about. I'm just getting some insight on what they're saying about these cards specifically. Now I want to work with the deck. And that's pretty much what I do. But some books, like the one that came with the Apocalypsis, you could get a whole education out of reading that. I mean, it's great. It's got so much information about myths and if you get the deck, spend a little more time reading the book for a little while, the Apocalypsis, I mean, because there's a lot of information to be had in there, stuff that I didn't even know, and I know about mythology, so I do like the way they did the bottoms slightly different. Um, trying to speed this up a little bit. This card, I'm not going to lie, creeps me out a little bit. When I was reading the background on this, it's some kind of demons that when she's sleeping come out for her. It's kind of creepy. Two totally different, um kind of perspectives on each style that he did. See how this one's more like classy and renaissance -y, I would call it, I guess, or it almost has like a British feel to it in this one, where this one you can clearly see there's more Viking going on in there. wanting to do this video for so long. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to keep them, um, you know, not so messy. But both of these decks, um, I would recommend getting. These guys, this, Eric is just I don't know, I just love his, his artwork. Um, I've gotten many other types of decks because obviously I read tarot and I love tarot. I love tarot decks. I can't get enough of them. Um, so out of all the decks that I got, I keep going back to these two when I read. You got to read the mythology behind some of these court cards, too, because um, you're going to see, like, a blue king, um, you know, on the strength card. There's, I mean, you just, you have to really read the book so you can appreciate who they're depicting on the card. And then, you know, you'll know why. They chose that image for that specific card, or that god, or that goddess, or that culture. But I didn't want to make the video too much about me. There's a lot of people explaining the cards or um, going over them in deck reviews and giving you a lot of the information that, hey, if you buy the deck, 
you're going to see anyway. And you're going to be able to read yourself what's going on. So I just wanted to show you a side-by-side -side of his two decks. Because they're in my favorites for sure. Sorry, let me move these up. These are the last two. It's the Queen of Wands and this is the King of Wands. This being Horus. So, there you have it. Tarot Illuminati, Tarot Apocalypsis by Eric C. Dunn and Kim Hamilton. Um, love them both. Highly recommend. If you like my video, like and subscribe. I'll see you later, guys. Bye.